Hi, welcome back to Prophecy Truth Today. I'm Linda Cambeeg, and we are studying the sea beast of Revelation 13. The correct identification of this sea beast in Revelation 13 is very important. So we have broken this into four parts. You are just about ready to view part two of the four part series. Remember, all four parts need to be viewed in succession in order to understand and appreciate how we have arrived at our conclusion. May God bless you in your Bible studies. Hello and welcome again to Prophecy Truth Today. My name is Linda Cambeek and I'll be your speaker. Our study today is about the beast from the sea. This is part two and it's an identification study. Some people have asked us, why should we study Bible prophecy? Well, being sober and vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour is good counsel for us. We need to understand the tactics and mentality of our enemy. As Corey Ten Boom pointed out, the first step on the way to victory is to recognize the enemy. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. You know, the Bible uses the imagery of soldiers and war to describe the Christian life. Paul in 2 Timothy, he urged Timothy to endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And he also wrote again to Timothy, but at the end of his life, I have fought the good fight. We face a formidable foe. Martin Luther had it right when he wrote his great hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great, and armed with cruel hate, on earth is not his equal. And John wrote, as a way of encouragement, You are children of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he, that is Jesus, who is in you is greater than he, that is Lucifer, who is in the world. Jesus also said, Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. In this study, I will show you why I believe the sea beast, identified in Revelation 13.1, is a future beast from today. And this sea beast is given 42 months or 1,260 days of authority by God in Revelation 13.5. Okay, two prophets that we are going to be studying. One is Daniel, and the prophet Daniel, as you remember, was a righteous man, and he was of the princely lineage of Israel. And he lived about 620 years before Christ until 538 years B.C. He was carried off into Babylon in 605 B.C. by Nebuchadnezzar, the Assyrian, and was still living when Assyria was overthrown by the Medes and the Persians. Daniel was about 90 years old when he died. And the second prophet we're going to be considering today is John the Revelator. The Apostle Paul was the son of Zebedee and lived from about 6 
to a hundred years after Christ. He was given visions by God that he wrote about in the book of Revelation. John was the last of the apostles who was connected with Jesus to die. He was exiled to the island of Patmos because of his unwavering fidelity to Christ, and he died at the age of about 94. There's about 600 years between these two prophets, and yet they prophesy about end-time events. The prophetic books of Daniel and Revelation together help us in identifying who the sea beast is from Revelation 13. In Daniel 2, Daniel had a vision. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar had a vision of four kingdoms, and it went clear down to the end of time. That's a long vision. And in Daniel 7, he had a night vision, again, of four kingdoms, the same four kingdoms, but this time there was additional information. It was a strange power called a little horn power. And then the Pope was wounded, and then the end of time. And in Revelation 13, the sea beast that John the Revelator saw he saw the Pope was wounded, and the Pope was healed. Okay, here is our timeline, marching forward. Daniel, the prophet, lived about here, clear back at the beginning of this timeline. And he had the visions of Daniel 2 and Daniel 7. And these visions not only extended from his day, but all the way to the end of time. John the Revelator lived about this time frame, about a hundred years after Christ, and he had a vision of the future in John 13, 1 and 5, 1, 2, 5, also till the end of time. So, John the Revelator of Patmos, let's establish a base for his Revelation 13. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now we remember that we are given a key to understanding what the seas mean. The waters, the seas which you saw, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. Oh, so it had leopard's body, bear claws, and a lion's head. Okay, these are symbols that we can readily see. But there's additional symbols we want to take note of. There were seven heads, ten horns, Ten crowns on the horns. And Revelation 13, 1 said, And on each of the beasts seven heads, a blasphemous name. That surely is a clue. So there are blasphemous names on all seven heads. And Revelation 13, 3 said, And I saw that one of his seven heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. That's got to be a clue, too. So we'll put it down here. One head was mortally wounded, and the deadly wound was healed. 
Okay, during these studies, we will use this sea beast's symbolic descriptions to identify him. Okay, let's first discuss and focus Daniel 2. You remember the vision of Daniel 2, but we'll do a mini overview right here, just in case some of you were not able to see that. Daniel 2 covers a dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had, but he couldn't remember it, so he demanded that all his wise men interpret the dream, and they said, we can't do that unless you tell us the dream. And the king was very wroth, so he set out to kill all his wise men. But after prayer to God, the dream was revealed and its interpretation given to the prophet Daniel by God. Then Daniel explained the dream and the interpretation to Nebuchadnezzar. In the dream, King Nebuchadnezzar sees a statue of a metal man that is constructed of several different metals and clay. The various metals and clay represent a succession of future kingdoms starting with Nebuchadnezzar and ending with the eternal kingdom that God will set up. This was Nebuchadnezzar's dream and Daniel's interpretation. The head of gold represented the Babylonian Empire. The king certainly puffed out his chest when Daniel said, you are this head of gold. But he slumped when Daniel said, but a kingdom after you will arise of inferior metal. He referred to the Medo-Persian Empire. Then the belly and thighs of bronze, the Greek Empire and the legs of iron, the pagan Roman Empire, and the feet and toes of iron and clay, that's the ten divided nations of Western Europe, and finally down to the toes of iron and clay. That's in the future. Ten kings also see in Revelation 13, 1, and ten horns. And at last... God's kingdom, kingdom number seven. This will be the kingdom that will never be replaced. It will never fall to another kingdom. It will never be destroyed. Now these were each successive kingdoms. They followed one after another. When Babylon was taken over by Medo-Persia, there was no more Babylon the same way with each of the ones in succession. And in the days of these ten toe kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all of these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So, let's see. The metal man prophecy spans from the head of gold, which is way back here in 600 years before Christ, all the way to the end of time. This is where we can place that on this road map. And the, the Medan Persian Empire, the Grecian Empire with a bronze belly, the iron and legs of the pagan Roman Empire, and the dividing of the pagan Roman Empire, the iron and feet clay, into the end of time. Of course, coming soon, there will be the ten toes of the ten kingdoms. And then, God's kingdom will be established. Okay, let's focus on the first part of Daniel 7. This is a mini overview of the four beasts from the sea. In Daniel 7, he saw four great beasts come up from the sea, and each 
was different from the other. The first beast was like a lion. The second beast was like a bear. The third beast was like a leopard. The fourth beast, oh, the fourth beast was dreadful and terrible and very strong. This dream is very interesting because it details the exact same four kingdoms as outlined in Daniel 2. But this time it's with four beasts instead of four different kinds of metal. Daniel spoke, saying, And I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds, that's widespread devastation, of the heavens were stirred up in the great sea, that's people groups. And the four great beasts came up from the sea, that is, those people groups again, each differing from the other. The first was like a lion, and had eagle's wings, and I watched till its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And suddenly another beast, like a bear, it was raised up on one side and had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth, and they said thus to it, Arise, devour much flesh. And after this I looked, and there was another, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird, and the beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. And after this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring and breaking in pieces and trampling the residue with its feet, and it was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Okay, these four beasts came from the sea. And we remember the sea prophetically means from among the people groups. Beast number one represented the Babylonian Empire. In fact, the symbols on the ruins of Babylon depict a winged lion. And Medo-Persia was represented by the bear. Notice that one shoulder was higher than the other. This merely meant that the Medes were stronger than the Persians. Beast number three was a leopard with wings. This represented the Grecian Roman Empire by Alexander the Great and his swift conquering of the Medo-Persian Empire. And the fourth beast the dreadful beast was none other than the pagan Roman Empire who ruled with great ferocity. Now these are four successive kingdoms. Okay, here's our metal man, and we know that they represented Babylonian, Medo-Persia, Greek Empire and the Pagan Roman Empire. And Daniel 7's beast represents lion represented Babylon, the bear, Medo-Persia, the leopard, Greece, and the beast, the Pagan Roman Empire. These are the same. The same empires are being represented here. So we can just put these four beasts right in the same spot as we put the body parts of the metal man. Now let's compare one more thing about Daniel 2 and Daniel 7. Okay, we recognize that the beasts and the and the metals represent the same things. But did you notice that when the bear conquered the lion, 
the empire was absorbed by the Medo-Persians. The same way when, when Alexander the Great came along, the Medo-Persians were absorbed by the Greek Empire. And when the terrible beast came along, they certainly devoured the Greek Empire, and that was also absorbed by it. And Rome, instead of being conquered totally by another kingdom, merely divided into ten kingdoms. That's represented by the ten horns. Remember, Rome, the pagan Roman Empire, kind of disintegrated within itself, and, and these tribes, you might say, broke out across Europe, which later became the ten European countries. So let's do a little more comparing here. God used two different types of symbols, metals and beasts, to show progressive kingdoms in the timeline. Both prophecies, Daniel 2 and Daniel 7, span the same timeline, that is, until God sets up his kingdom. Now, comparing Daniel 7 to Revelation 13, the Bible teaches that both prophecies that the beasts came from the sea, from among the people groups. The beast parts, which were in Daniel 7, are also in Revelation 13, 1. This indicates that this strange beast that comes up out of the sea consists of the descendants from the same people groups as Daniel 7. So, let's talk about the ten horns and the ten crowns. In Revelation 13, 1, the ten horns with crowns are ten toes, ten kings, ten civil regional rulers, you might say, that will be put in place in the days of these ten kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom. So that's in the future. These parts, the lion's head, the leopard's body, the bear claws, came from the three empires that are in the past. But the people groups still remain. The lion, leopard, and bear parts indicate that this beast consists of the descendants from Daniel 7, the people groups, you might say. We hope this Bible study was a blessing and gives you food for additional study. May God richly bless you from Prophecy Truth Today. <laughs>